right. I'm at work right now, going to lunch with my office mate, Jay. Hey. This is Jay Schultz. <laughs> Hello. He brings the sexy to our show. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been in the animation industry? Since 1995. I didn't graduate college. I went straight into the job. Started at Fox Feature Animation. Doing storyboards Whoa. with Don Bluth. With Don Bluth, nice. Don Bluth, yeah. Told me one of the greatest things I've ever heard. There's only two ways to do a drawing. There's the right way and the wrong way. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, that's harsh. And he's like, Jay, which way are you gonna do it? I'm like, the right way. <laughs> Drawing a space guy. Space guy? Future space guy, I don't know why. It's just like, all right, future space guy it is. I don't know, I, I just kind of make it up as I go. I start drawing shapes. And yeah. Whatever comes out of the shapes is whatever kind of happens. I mean, there are times where I'm like, oh, I want to I wanna draw a unicorn with a machine gun. <laughs> so so I will, but, but usually most of the time I just, I just make it up as I go. Yeah. Like when I'm drawing, I'm always asking myself questions. You know, it's like, what is this about? Like, what am I trying to express? What's, what's the, what's, what's the idea? What's the story? What's, what's this whole thing about? You know? And like, I'll throw out a lot of questions, <laughs> and like, I'll have answers for those questions, and then I'll have more questions. But, but it, it's really you're trying to figure out an, an answer to a problem that you create. Huh. I treat my backgrounds like characters. Yeah. Um, you give them personality. You give them an emotional feel. Uh, because like any anything in animation is, it's designed to get an emotional reaction. Like when you look at different things, we color things certain ways. To like red means a certain thing. Green's gonna mean a certain thing. Blue's gonna mean a certain thing. Uh, it's gonna hit you emotionally on a mental level. But like backgrounds themselves, they too are also seen as characters. Like, yet again, asking yourself questions. It's like, what do I want to get out of this background? I'm like, am I walking through a happy cemetery? How do I make a happy cemetery? Like, ask those questions. Like, well, when you start looking at shapes in general, we're going back to shapes, you know, a lot of round, fluid shapes are much more happier, and they're much more nicer. Um, more angular shapes that are harder and sharper, those are scary. You know, round things are cute and fun. Flat, angular things are sharp. They could be scary. There's no 100% rule. Yeah. Like, I can make something happy and nice out of angular, sharp shapes. Do you have any in your sketchbook? This is a fun thing, and like he's got a, a lot of angular shapes, but he. But the other versus this. Yeah, this where it's is got very sharp edges. Yeah. And this guy's very curvy. But you know, you treat your backgrounds the same way. Well, there's that. See, there's a lot of angular shapes here. Yeah. Sharp, not super scary. Sharp like a dragon. Yeah, yeah. I'm also thinking compositionally too. Like how can I make this move into this? You know, like how can I use these oh, forms? That's beautiful. Yeah, it's like I'm always thinking in a circular kind of compositional manner. Uh. I was thinking of spawn. <laughs> you know, it's just like how this tail wraps around here and it goes back up into here. Giving it movement. You know? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, so Drunken good. animals. Now what I was talking about, like using curved and angular shapes to create a, an emotional feel. Like this feels happy and nice, but yet I used all these angular shapes. But why does it feel happy and nice? Maybe because of what it is, you know, it's the woods. I mean, it's not like a dead wood, you know, it's like there's a lot of life and and things moving and fluid motion throughout it. feels it. like so. these rounded rocks make it feel friendly, yeah. but these sharp points make it feel like you're coming out of a dangerous... Yeah, there's personality, there's character within the lines and shapes. You know, everything has kind of a, a particular place where it should be. I'm, I'm a big... I'm a big opponent against tangents. Yeah. Like, I try not to have too many things run into each other and, and, and overlap its 
so it, it like causes visual tension. So I always have things kind of staged in a way where it's really clear mm -hmm. and easy to see. Imagine your backgrounds as characters and start from there and, and ask yourself, what do I want to get out of this background? Like, what is it really trying to say? And how can you tell a story with that background? Yeah, how can you tell a story? And that's up to you to answer. Kind of screwed up her pose. I'm just gonna have to live with it. <laughs> What's your favorite part about being in it, working in the animation industry? At first, I thought it was getting paid to draw, but <laughs> but now that I'm past that, it's probably the perks. Like, like that, what? Like that huge Warner Brothers party we went to. Oh yeah. Like that was insane. Yeah. And uh, being able to draw with other artists—that's pretty. Getting good. other, yeah, it's like I don't think about that anymore. Like really, like I did a lot of uh, things for Nickelodeon where they would send us out to go draw. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like. We would go draw at Mall of America, like we would go draw at uh, different like cable shows and things huh. like that. But we would also draw at like hospitals and things oh, yeah. like that. So we would go out and just draw like Nickelodeon characters for all these different events and stuff. So I would go to places. We used to do critiques at, at, at uh, Comic Con. Oh right? yes, yeah. Comic Con for like a probably eleven years. Oh. Every year, just going to Comic Con and just like looking at people's work and giving them ideas like we did we did it different there like we help people figure out how to be make better portfolios and how to draw better. yeah That's we good. would spend like 15 20 30 minutes and just like take as long as we could and we had like examples of like like I wish my portfolio looked like the, right. the examples that we showed the fantasy portfolio oh yeah we showed them like amazing <laughs> stuff where they'd just be like I can't do that and I'm like I can't do so what do, you, what do you think is like the number one thing that people do wrong with a portfolio when they're trying to get into animation? Oh, uh, drawing stuff that's out there already. If you're drawing Mickey Mouse or Batman or like anything that's like like out there in animation already, it's like no, no, don't draw anybody else's stuff. Draw your stuff and you know, lots of anatomy, lots of animal drawings, lots of uh, lots of cool drawings of buildings and I know that parks yeah. and stuff the LT so. great guy Jorge yeah. he I remember hearing a story about how he got into Cal Arts is that uh, he had two portfolios one yeah. was like the one he thought they wanted to see and the yeah. one that was actually a sketchbook with all yeah. his drawings that's what I want to see I want to see your sketchbook and I want to know how you think as an artist and I want to see how you use shapes and forms like I don't want to see you draw like Harley Quinn I don't care I'm like, I don't care about any of that. Yeah. Like, I want to see how good you draw and what comes out of your brain. So, like, I give people, like, tons of reference of stuff. I'm like, take these ideas and thoughts and make them your own. That's cool. So, and it's, you know, start from, like, a basic understanding of how things look and work and, and build up on that. So, can you so. tell from just, a, like, a glimpse at a portfolio whether they're going to make it or not? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about because I thought about all the portfolios that I saw and I'm like, mm, oh, oh, no, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that one's, oh, oh my God, that's amazing. And I'm like, ooh, no, no. Because you can, you can tell by the, they understand how anatomy works. They know where all the muscles are. You know, they, they understand how things work in three-dimensional space. When they got a peel, they've got that yeah. special sauce. Yeah, well, you know, they know how to use a, a, a line to make an, an expressive emotional shape. It's like that's that's the thing I love is just seeing the expressive emotional shape. Yeah. Like how they use forms and shapes, but also how you convey a story. It's not it's not just drawing a, a person really well, it's drawing a person that like like say an old man's feeding his dog. Is he like a really poor guy? And he's like using the last bit of his food to feed a dog who's like this scruffy mongrel dog. I'm like that's it Look for a, that cool story. It tells a story. You know, but As like, opposed to just, that's an old man. Yeah, that's an old man. But like, not only do they like make a cool story, but they compose the, the frame of the way the guy sits that you're, you're going to look all the way from his head down to his, his arm to his leg and it's going to go back into the dog and the way like maybe a tree is pushed up against next to the guy, it just makes this cool circular composition. That's cool. Like, that's... That's where it's like you're combining both the artistic understanding of how things look with also like the storytelling. Yeah. Jay's our background designer on our show. Right, I guess you're the back, the uh, 
the supervisor, background oh, supervisor. supervisor. Yes, oh. very important. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I'm always fascinated watching his, watching him design, like creeping over his shoulder and <laughs> breathing heavily <laughs> and being like, but he, every, Are you every at my shapes, man. <laughs> every single thing he does is to control the viewer's eye. Every object on the page, like, points towards what you want them to point to. What you want the eyes to look at, and every shadow, he, like, like the last step is designing the shadows to point where you want them to go. I mean, yeah. it's incredible how much thought goes into it. Control your mind <laughs> with shapes and forms. Look there at how it empty it is. More beer, please. All right, it's uh, the end of the day. It's been pretty good today. It was uh, productive. For the 100 Days of Making Comics, I penciled about a half a page. And uh, I like where the story's going so far. It's been good. I really want to thank my office mate, Jay, for hanging out with me today and uh, doing a little video, chit-chat, talking about the industry. Um, he's just got so much in for information, inspiration, and I'm glad to be able to share it with y'all. I recommend following Jay. He's always posting sketches, and his stuff is incredible. Follow him on Facebook at uh, Jay Schultz's Doodle a Day. You can go back through his archives there and check out some of his amazing work, especially his backgrounds. They are absolutely incredible. The backgrounds he's doing on our show for Wizard of Oz are phenomenal. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Keep smiling.